everybody to our May 9th CSC board meeting. Um, I'm going to first do the instructions on having a comment during the meeting, and then I'll call the order. So during the meeting, since we're on Zoom, at points during the meeting when the meeting requests a comment, members of the shop indicate desire to speak. All other comments shall be addressed to board directors in limited to three minutes per speaker. The board directors may choose to respond to comments or request staff to respond at the conclusion of the comment um, period. All right, so I'm going to call to order, and um, everybody is present and coming for. And so let's take a look at the agenda for adoption. Is there any questions about the agenda? Do we need to do anything for Chief White? Do you need to adopt Chief White? No? Eric, is there any additions? Stephen, would you like to make a comment about the agenda? Uh, well, actually, not the agenda, but the uh, last content? meeting. Last meeting's uh, uh, recap. I would like to talk about that. Okay, so we'll do that during the second. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's pass this uh, agenda. So a motion to adopt the agenda as it is. All in favor? Sure. Um, any opposed? No. Okay. Moving forward, we are going to go on to the consent calendar. Do the board members have any issues or questions with the consent calendar? The draft minutes. We're regularly meeting last month, or the vote date. Mm -hmm. Okay. I asked mm -hmm. the thing that I needed to ask beforehand, and it says I accepted. All right, Stephen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, in, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, last month's r report on what we did, uh, it mentions the public comments and it says, I was talking about landscaping, and I never mentioned landscaping. What I talked about last month was the fact that uh, we've got a wall that is uh, taking about 2,000 square feet of our property, uh, that is Linwood Park property, and it's, it's basically appended it to our, uh, the adjacent neighbor. That doesn't belong there. We are now, uh, and I'm going to just reiterate the points I made last month. We are parking a trailer illegally in, on Miller Creek Road, and that could be a spot to park that trailer off the street and be in compliance with uh, the county regulations regarding commercial vehicles on the street. So that I would like you to correct that, and also note my comments that I just made. That's it. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. And I, I, I would like—I mean—I would like you to act on it. I mean, I'm not just making a remark. You, you can review the tape. You can see what I said. There is—it's it's a problem when you don't accurately report what occurs here. Okay, this is public. This is a public meeting. You can't just make up stuff that, uh, you know, if I say something and you want to characterize it in a way that is accurate, that's good. If you characterize it falsely, you've, you've, you've impacted the integrity of this, uh, this, this body. Right. Thank you. All right. So, um, since we have questions, um, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? All, All right. right. All opposed? All right. All right, public comment, open time for items on the agenda. Speakers may comment only on non-agenda items within subject matter jurisdiction of the district. The board may not take action on, consider, or debate items not on the agenda, except under new circumstances. Meeting statutory tests. Response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to factual information or clarifying questions with staff or board at the conclusion of the public comment period. The president may refer the matter to staff or future meeting agendas. All right, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, yes, so I have two things to talk about. First thing is kindness, and the second thing is integrity. And uh, I'll start with the kindness. Um, I uh, and neighbors with Linda Barnello, who used to attend all these meetings. Um, she's quite frail. Um, during COVID, she's been isolated. She had a back and hip issue. And uh, she's having challenges, as are a lot of our neighbors, uh, especially those who live alone. And I think it would be wonderful if the CSD could actually reach out to Linda just because she's a friend of the district. She's donated probably more money to this district than just about anybody. Maybe, maybe with the exception of your family, she's done a lot, especially for the fire department. And I just think it, it would be a very nice act of kindness to reach out to her and just say, hey, Linda, we miss you. Now, maybe you don't want her back here, but I think just just uh, acknowledging that. We also have other neighbors, uh, Marilyn Boatwright, who used to serve on the Park and Rec Commission. She also lives on, she lives on Quietwood. She's having trouble uh, getting around, you know, Marilyn. Um, why not reach out to, to, to our neighbors, especially the ones that have been here for a real long time? I don't know what we can do, but I would like you to think in terms of that. The second thing is integrity. Um, so first point that I made was completely bypassed. You, you just, just approved the calendar like I didn't didn't have anything to say. And, you know, last month I, I said, hey, you guys are just hammering down stuff, you're not really listening. Well, there's another example, I'm sorry. The integrity in which we run this community is based on all of your personal integrity. Um, I was, this weekend, I was by maintenance shelter, uh, maintenance uh, thing, and I happened to run into the architect. I asked the architect, uh, how come the vehicles are parked outside? And he, in his charming way, uh, told me to F off, and uh, it just was just really nasty to me. But the problem is, is that we got this, the most expensive project we've done in years, and there's never been any accountability on how this project works and why the mistakes were made and how we can avoid making similar mistakes in the future. I had pointed out that there was going to be a problem with access, and sure enough, that's what occurred. And I, I, I duly hope that you individually have the integrity to follow up and make sure that things are done responsibly here. That's all I have to say. Have a nice meeting. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Have a great evening. Yep. Um, all right. I guess there's no other people in the public, so moving on to district matters. We're going to look at the financial year 2023 2024 post district property budget, and we are to approve it after we have a little discussion. Eric, did you have anything uh, to say? Yeah, sure. I'll be brief. I gave you a pretty uh, detailed staff report, including all the notes from the previous times. Um, you guys have seen the budget. There really isn't much change from the one that you looked at last month. Uh, the things that did change uh, were primarily what I identified last month as would be needed. Um, we did, I did look at the property taxes after all the April allocations and made some slight adjustments to a few of those, uh, making adjustments to fire department supplies and equipment expenditures, and uh, some fairly significant adjustments to various utility expenses, mostly water, sewer, and uh, gas and electric, which have seen some significant increase in cost. As anybody who's a PG&E bill is well aware. Um, 
The one thing I did want to point out on this, in this budget, I know we've talked about this a little bit, and I'll talk about it more in my other report, but this budget does not incorporate any um, wage increases or pay increases for non-represented staff. Um, that basically is uh, our admin department of one, and then our part direct, as well as our part direct. Um, so that's coming along. I'll talk more about that later, but just want to be clear that that's not included in this uh, budget that I am proposing to be approved at this time. Um, when you look at it, uh, from Bounty perspective, uh, as of April 30th, uh, the net balance uh, cash available, meaning with the not counting any of the restricted funds that we have was at about 7.7 .7 million. Um, so we're still in really good shape from a cash perspective uh, over a year's worth of operating, which is great. Uh, that's an increase of a little over 700,000 from the same point in time last year, and uh, we've done some significant spending in the past year, so that's a good place for us to be. Uh, this budget, again, uh, those of you, I mean, everybody's been on this board long enough to know it, I try to budget fairly conservatively, and this is a conservative uh, net gain of a little over 440,000. That's consistent with what it's been in past years, uh, most recently, and uh, we've been able to uh, either meet and or exceed that from a net gain standpoint. So I, I feel relatively good about that. What this does not include is any of the capital expenditures that we could be looking at for the FEMA claim out back. Um, that said, I still have no reason to believe that we won't get 93.5% of that covered. Uh, University of as well. So as we are able to get more accurate costs on that, I'll report that and more updates on that in my district manager report. Otherwise, I did try to give you guys some notes. I'm just going to point out a couple things on the current secured uh, property tax, which is the largest tax bucket. Uh, I looked at what I am uh, expecting for this year, and then I added about 1% to that for next year. Uh, I, I try to keep conservative on that. I'd rather exceed it and fall short. Uh, and I think that's a safe place to be. Uh, and that's 1% over what I'm expecting, not over what I budgeted last year. We're going to exceed what we budgeted for. Uh, utilities on the water and sewer side, uh, on the park uh, specifically, it's about a 30% increase. Uh, that uh, might be over budgeted on my side, and some of that large cost from the last 12 months is going to be a lot of water leaks. We got a lot of the piping that needs to be fixed when that happens. Water moves pretty quickly there, uh, but all the systems for the aging, so I wanted to stay on the safe side for budgeting that. Uh, on the rec side, uh, I didn't leave a note here on the top, but just want to point out that you know at this time last year we still had some uncertainty on some certain things with rec, uh, which is why you might see some larger disparities uh, from what was budgeted last year, but not necessarily what we're trending towards in the actuals that we got this year. So that explains some of those, is that especially on the pool side, we budgeted the pool fairly conservatively last year. Uh, and then utilities and gas, uh, with heating the pool, this winter was exceptionally cold, it felt like. Um, so that's got like a 50% increase to it uh, mm -hmm. there. And that is almost, almost entirely due to just gas costs and heating the, heating the pool. Uh, and then on the fire department side, same issue with utilities increase. And then on the miscellaneous supplies, uh, I would like to thank Captain Brackett next door. He really went through, did all of the research. Miscellaneous supplies is where we uh, budget for all of the uh, personal protective equipment, PPE, things like turnouts, wildland gear, everything. Uh, he went through really good and gave me a good sense of what we're going to, you know, could need next year as well as all of the most current pricing of all the stuff that we use. So once we punch that in, uh, that brought that budget up by about 23%. So, uh, but that's pretty critical when yeah. you're a firefighter. So uh, I want to make sure that we have that. We have good plans for rotating and uh, making sure that this things that uh, get past a useful life, we're well planned and we know when those are. So we did a lot of really good work for you on that. I was appreciative. Uh, otherwise, I am happy to take any questions you might have. Obviously, there's a lot more notes, but I feel like we'll do. Yeah, I mean, this has been rehashed multiple times. Any other questions? I have a question. This is our final time that we're reviewing this for the year. This is, this is looking at adopting the budget. Without pay increases in here, correct? correct. With, with, the, with the notion that once that is negotiated, then it's always okay to amend a budget. So we want to adopt the budget so they know what they're working with, and then um, it's always okay to amend it when we come to these like that. So that's what we're Yeah, I do a little something on that in my district manager report, but to see Bond's point, the budget amendments are a very common process. This lets you know where we currently stand from a budget standpoint. Uh, we'll be looking at bringing back a uh, more formal policy and procedure on how all those reviews will take place. At that time, will also be recommendations uh, likely for wage increases, uh, and depending on the scope of that, uh, we can easily put together a budget amendment that would affect not only the salary lines, but all the uh, ancillary, ancillary lines, things like pension, payroll tax, uh, the workers' comp, all that is, you know, kind of what's referred to as the full burden cost, so we easily update all of that and uh, come back with an amendment. So that way, when we're looking at this next year, you're not looking at an old document that we know is, is outdated. Does that make sense? It does. Right. So the bottom line, we won't be projectively ending up with $414,000. 443 You're looking at about that yeah. this year? Yeah. Uh, likely not. Depends on what happens with the wage cuts. Okay. Last year was 414 so we saw a lot of pressure about that, too. Yeah. yeah. And I expect that next month will depend. Right. I would expect that uh, we might work on some of that and uh, work with the salon leaders on get that policy together. Hopefully, by next month, uh, we can bring something in. Uh, depending on how that goes, I can bring a bunch of them in the following month. And then we might need to have one every for the stuff. So it's, it's, it's a working document, unfortunately. Okay. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? Do we already? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. All right. All those in favor of passing the 2023-2024 district property budget, say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Here, we are on to your screen. Let's say what? Uh, where to start? Uh, it was very relaxing, not the FEMA. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you have one of those coming around. Uh, yeah, just a short packet, but there's a lot of heavy events that happens on, so let's just get to start with FEMA, uh, on where we stand right now. Uh, last week, Matt Smelter, who's one of our engineers, uh, joined me, and we present uh, what's known as the Marine Project Coordination Group. This involves uh, representatives from every major environmental regulatory agency, so from NOAA, Division of Wildlife, to Regional Water Quality Control Board, to uh, Army Corps of Engineers, representatives from the county, representatives from the uh, uh, I'm working on what the RCD stands for. Um, you can just make it up. Yeah, that's, no, no. that's, a, regional, that's a regional conservation district. Uh, one of the main employees there. Very, very useful resource for us. Uh, so we presented to them some of the draft plans that we have to date with several alternatives. They provided a lot of feedback on that. Uh, we sent this back to the drawing, not to the drawing board, but allowed Matt to go back and kind of refine on some of that work too. So it's an informal, non-binding, non-public meeting, uh, but it does give a sense of what we need to modify going into actual application and pre-application meetings. Uh, so we've already requested the pre-application meetings with some of the various agencies, um, and Matt's been great. I don't know where we'd be without him. Uh, I have engaged the services of another engineer, a structural engineer, specifically for the building and the water intrusion that came into the uh, uh, below surface pit that's mm -hmm. in the building, um, and he's going to be designing plans on a building envelope that, that will ideally serve as a water barrier, moisture barrier, and prevention device that will be on the outside of the building. That'll be, uh, that work will be done in coordination with the
meetings today? Yeah, I have meetings this morning with our female rep. Um, that looked really good. Mostly to kind of uh, review the damage description, which is done, and then talk about uh, what's known as Cat B expenses, which is for the emergency response uh, work that we had to do, the prevention work that we had to do at the very beginning, and just making sure we had all of that documentation started to put together because we can submit that at any uh, time. Once I have everything, I'm waiting on a couple other invoices, but once I get that, uh, that's like $5,000 worth of work. That was in the grand scheme of things, nothing, but it still qualifies as a reimbursable expense. So uh, we'll be uh, getting that put together, submitting. Uh, otherwise, we're just, like I said, working on the on all the environmental compliance needs. We have a biologist who will be out later this month um, to append a report that we actually use for the construction of the park maintenance facility. Uh, she's going to do a brief survey here, but she's already got the greater area of the groundwork done for this. So that will be happening. Um, can she, sorry, can she then actually say, like, hey, I just did this a year, two years ago, and this is how much this has impacted the area? Or, I guess, no. Like, he doesn't really care about the, okay, okay no, so never mind. No. I would be interested to find out how much yeah. it Sorry. No, she's not even going to look down that area, but okay. the broader scope of things still applies. So, you know, her comments on the yeah. creek and everything still apply. Okay. Um, then, uh, that's really kind of about it, uh, the coordination game and just listening into all of these, you know, because you have Army Corps who have certain thoughts and opinions on design plans and the impact of the creek and then you have regional water, who's got the water quality control board, who's got, you know, just getting something that everybody will accept when you're literally altering the creek bed floor uh, and then the banks and it's going to touch the other side of the bank. Um, and then something that FEMA will also accept because FEMA's the one who publishes a 100-year floodplain uh, and you got to just, it's a lift and uh, if we didn't have a map, um, there's no way I can pull this off. I just, I couldn't, if you have that as a result, we got a very, very, very good one who, as soon as we got in this meeting, he's like, oh, hey, Nicole, hey, Johnny, I mean, he's just talking to all these people, he's interacting with all these agencies a lot, he's the right person for the job. So, uh, with that, any questions before I move on to any of the theme stuff? I don't have updated cost estimates, I'm not going to know until we get more final uh, plans set that we know what we can do, and then we'll uh, be able to make some more realistic estimates. Uh, it's not going to be cheap. Yeah. I just want to say how impressed I am and thankful that you are handling all this and delivering all those acronyms. <laughs> well, I just need to report acronyms, and it's something I'm talking about. Well, and no, I, I, but I, I do appreciate that. that you handle this, and, I and you knew that the money question was going to come, so thank you for... Yeah, no, I, 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 I appreciate it. It's, it's a lot of work. Luke's been helpful as much as uh, he can. I chip in as much as I can. Matt and our engineers and our consultants have been excellent to work with. We've got a really good team that's going with it, um, so that helps a lot. Uh, we actually do have the other thing I would say is that Early next month, it's already scheduled. We're going to have some people out there who are going to do some uh, uh, boring. Uh, basically, they're going to drill down 20 to 25 feet so that way they can do more proper soil samples and everything else. That goes more for the civil design on the retaining wall or whatever might be needed up at the top. But so, work is scheduled, work is happening, and the project's moving forward. We have a very aggressive goal of trying to be able to complete this work this year before the next rainy season. Uh, I would say it's a coin flip right now. Where, uh, most people, you know, don't do that. They do the nature, and the agencies are already saying, well, you can always apply for emergency this and explain why, uh, because we don't want to go through another rainy season, hoping that it doesn't have another catastrophic event. Yeah. Uh, but you can't do anything to get permitted clearance by what is a minimum of a half a dozen different federal and, uh, and state agencies. Well, I'm just impressed with how fast you guys all jumped on this and yeah. with the right people. Well, now you're right, the right people to talk to you. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, okay, park play structure. We crossed a major. Uh, Earl? Yeah, Earl, or uh, I don't want to say landmark, but a. Uh, <laughs> Stepping stone? No. Big <laughs> <laughs> milestone. That's what I'm looking for. Big milestone. Uh, last, last week on Monday, the RFP formally went out. I sent you guys all an update about it. It's on the website if you want to look at what it is. Um, we're definitely getting some uh, questions and response and interest from a handful of vendors. Uh, Luke and I met with uh, one of the vendors today who came in for a site visit, had some good questions um, with both sites. Uh, I've already got uh, a handful. Uh, Right now, maybe four or five have already expressed interest in one of the other prospective bidders list. Um, some of them have some good questions that we realize we're going to need to come up with formal answers for and push it out to the group as an addendum. Okay. Uh, but I'm feeling good about it. Uh, again, I, I would encourage you to look at it. In terms of the timeline, again, we're trying to be kind of aggressive with this too, because ultimately I'd like to be able to award this as soon as possible, uh, strictly for the fact that there are lead times involved. Uh, so we want to give that award out with as much lead time as possible that way we can ensure that we get the equipment and the things that we want in time. Uh, where May 31st is the deadline for submittal. Uh, staff will kind of go through them at that point, just making sure everything's qualified. Uh, we will likely call a special meeting of the Park and Commission uh, with the goal of sharing a the qualified proposals, uh, that would be a public meeting, we'll push that out, public will come in, take a look at them, uh, and ultimately with the goal of coming down with a recommended option for ideally the June, I think it's June 12th board meeting, um, with a recommendation to accept one of the proposals, so that would be, yeah, so that's June 13th. Okay, June 13th. So we're moving. Um, so when would be that part of the recommendation? I don't know, uh, I haven't set that up, and I've got to heard five other cats okay. for schedule availability and, uh, and see when they can make it. Um, so that would be a special meeting. I'm tentatively actually thinking about, uh, and I haven't even talked to Chief White uh, about this, although I don't know if he would strongly object, um, but potentially uh, postponing the next fire commission meeting and having the, this fire commission in that place uh, oh, no. instead. I, I know, so everybody's disappointed. Uh, no. So just looking at when rooms are available, when people can be available, everything else, um, anytime you get a coordinated schedule, multiple people in the street. Uh, but that is, again, we've crossed a good milestone, thank you. Uh, there were no achievements, we're down there. <laughs> so uh, that, was, that was also a big lift, uh, but happy to get out, happy to get done. I'm actually really happy. Uh, thank you to Luke, who certainly helped out and waited on a lot of that, too. Uh, and I think the RP is good, and I hope that it meets our needs and we get some more quality proposals out there. Um, how many proposals have gone so far? Oh, we won't get any until. May 31st. Okay, so that's the day that they all get submitted to you. My experience with things like this are, yes, you get the proposal usually within the last hour. It's like when you're doing your essays where you log in at 11, 10, so that you can be in before it turns 11.59 p.m. And so you're in on that day, right? Right now, look at the last. I always tell my work on it, man. Okay, sure. I did want to say, I looked at the online RP, and I really am excited that we are moving forward with stuff that the public is saying. Stephen also said this previously, that we're going to try to do the park structure with more natural looking materials and colors versus the stuff we all grew up with, the forest colors in the park. Wait, I didn't look at that slide. Um, so. <laughs> I do have I do have an old school merry go round that uh, and an old bubble gym I put in there. So uh, <laughs> this is why I mean yeah, this is a design Yeah. No, so, I was just excited to see that we're, we're going to be doing stuff. Yeah. Right. I think that. Yes. Do you have to wait for the bids? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I think there's one up in front of you. We already have the funding for that. Oh, never mind. Oh, I think that's right. Oh, sorry. Okay. This is this is uh, the trail's there. Yeah, we're not. Moving. We can get to that. Um, and then otherwise, just a couple of little notes on here. Uh, again, uh, thank you to uh, Lisa and Savon who uh, gave up a few hours and happened to meet Luke and I. And we talked about the uh, policy for the regular review of non-representative staff pay scales. Uh, had a good brainstorming session. I, thought, uh, I haven't made a lot of headway since that meeting, but with a lot of this other stuff now, kind of in the wait and see mode, uh, I can get to work on that. So hopefully, be able to bring if nothing else. A, a draft of the June meeting, uh, ideally something far beyond the draft that the board would actually want to consider and potentially not approve. Uh, and then storage cargo containers have been sold. Uh, I expect them to be gone hopefully by the end of next week. Uh, we actually uh, wound up selling them to the Marine County Open Space District, who had a definite need for them. Uh, they jumped on it and took one look at them and said, yes, we'll take them. Uh, so they are just coordinating transportation and a little site prep for where they are moving them to. Just no, 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 they're going to do it there. Uh, okay. So they're just going into a park? And they're telling me to do whatever they want. Well, park. <laughs> Will they be removed before camps? Oh, yeah. No, hopefully by next week. Okay. I mean, I give them all, because we do a lot of work in open space. I knew it would take them a few weeks, but uh, once they committed to them, I said they're yours and they need to sit for a few weeks. We're fine with that. Uh, but we're getting $1,400 worth of those. For both of them? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> That'll be more than you pay. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's right. Um, okay, so, any yeah. other questions? Comments? Thank you for your report. Thank, thank you for your report. Very thorough. And thank you for your feedback. I will say, as an interesting little aside, when the open staff uh, people came by, and one of them was their chief maintenance person, and uh, they wanted a quick little tour of the uh, of maintenance facility, and uh, quickly asked if I haven't had digital copies of the plans because they thought it was perfectly well thought designed for all these. Can we sell it to them? <laughs> 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 yeah. Both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move on to item F, fire department matters. Did we not have a fire? Nope. Okay, so then that's why there's nothing there. It was off. All right, Chief, take away. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, fairly light um, in content, but I can certainly cover what we do have. Um, uh, thankfully, uh, this past Wednesday, uh, I was unavailable, but Eric was able to step in and provide some, some guidance on our um, OSCE meeting within WPA. <laughs> the advisory technical committee has submitted information regarding the recommended um, projects for prioritization of funding uh, and all tied in with the budget. Um, and we were struggling to get folks for that meeting for a number of reasons, but thankfully, Eric, as always, is Johnny on the spot or Eric on the spot in this case. So <laughs> with that, we're going to move through and get this, this done, because otherwise, the board of directors would not have had something to review and approve by May 18th, which is what the timelines were. So the great thing is when I understand everything went through smooth sailing, both from the committee recommendations as well as the ATC. And, um, on the 18th, we anticipate the board of directors will approve the next or upcoming work plan and budget. Um, so with that, there's some large-scale projects that are uh, planned, one for Nevada near Shaded Field Break, um, 60 miles worth of work. That's, that's an amazing amount of work. Uh, but I thought I would mention that just because they're our joining neighbors and it's, it's certainly something to take note of. Here really, um, it didn't give me specifics, but um, from what I do know, I'll try to get this information, I'll bring it back to the next meeting. The, the width of the break can range anywhere from 100 to 300 feet. Um, so that's a substantial amount of, of vegetation that they're looking to, to remove over roughly 3,500 acres. Um, and that could adjust upward or backward just depending on how things progress. But, that's one big rate. It's basically the border of the entire city, and it's uh, on the western side to the, from the south all the way through the north. Uh, part of it is the Chicken Valley yeah. over here, uh, so at the bottom of, you know, if you go up over our hill and you drop into the chain, all of that. I mean, okay. This is a huge multi year project. Uh, I think we're in a chain. It was. There's a great article about it in the IDA. Um, one of the advantages, and the advantage disadvantage, but for that zone, the Bottom Fire District is the only agency in that zone. So they're not, it, it's. Uh, well, so the NWP is broken into five zones, and within those zones are various things. So Santa Fe, it's nice here in Santa Fe because it's literally just us in the city. So the coordination between multiple agencies is very simple because we coordinate with Santa Fe on a thousand and one things already. In Nevada, it's only the Nevada Fire Protection District. Mm -hmm. So as they're planning out projects, they have the entire zone's worth of funding to work with. In Central Marine Zone, you have like six or seven different agencies down there that are all kind of coordinating and competing and everything else. So Nevada has a nice bucket by which to work with. Uh, this is again it's a multi-year project, and they're actually uh, pursuing millions of dollars of additional funding to get it done. They're, this is a project much bigger than the WPA funding level. Yeah, but it was a full message project. So hats off to them. Yeah, you know it's something because I, I saw where goats and costs were just increasing exponentially. And I thought, well, goats you know can multiply pretty easily. I think goats might be a problem venture. Yeah, there's plenty of restaurants to take care of that. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, that being said, a lot of the projects were just continuations of uh, current work that's been underway. But there is another um, project that's coming up in the shape of non-field break areas involving us here in Marinwood, San Rafael, and California State Parks. And so with that, um, a lot of work along the fire trails is set to, to take place. And it, it's really designed to just reduce some of the vegetation that hasn't been addressed through either lightning strikes or wildfire over the course of the last century, um, or either some of the um, mechanical removal that has taken place in other areas, but we hadn't gotten to those areas. Um, but there could be go grazing. It's also a supplement to that effort. Um, and so there's invasive species. There's some non-native species there, including acacia, um, eucalyptus, some broom, and... I'm sorry. Just the collect us. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, so given that, um, there, there's a definite effort underway to try to create. It won't mirror what we've seen in the model putting forward right now, but it could be like the first phase of multiple projects. It could actually have a cross-jurisdiction um, uh, impacts and, and help me create some of those buffers in some of those areas that we think will be certainly helpful to us as we try to continue our risk reduction efforts over the course of the next, how many years we have left? Six? I this point, yeah, six years. And hopefully that will extend into 16, um, given a renewal of Measure C funding, of course, which I anticipate. I'm sorry. Of course they're going to renew. Yeah, I, I, would, I would expect. Um, so, I, never heard the tax I hate to keep on poking when everybody's poking, but considering the fact, that it's turning and removal of invasive and non-native species, such as eucalyptus is the first. Mm -hmm. Does, do we have any way to budge on that? Or? We had a, a conversation with <coughs> NWPA Executive Director's Assistant Anne Creelock, um, and briefly with Mark Brown. Their recommendations um, stem really from the idea of limiting things up to a certain point, but they didn't necessarily, from what I can recall, the conversation see value in trying to top off and or remove the trees right now. Okay. Well, um, like, I mean, there's nothing right. 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 And, yeah. so, I guess so that's, that's part of the challenge. That being said, um, it may even come back at some point to us looking to spend some of our existing
uh, or it might get just included. I don't have all the details in Berkeley, but uh, I was uh, familiar with this. The NWPA put in a legal brief to that. Mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. also. Okay, well, they're, please, they're combined. Yeah. Please tell us. I don't know what we're Well, basically, about. just stating that when you do these types of things, you can't just use broad strokes in your descriptions. You literally need to go through and identify every single tree. And even though, yeah, we get it to the lipids, it still has an environmental impact if you remove it or if you did it. You know, so they were paying um, a lot of attention to that because it could significantly impact the uh, requirements. In, yeah, okay. So I don't know if you're familiar with the California Environmental Quality Act and all the things associated with that, but Anne Creelock from the NWPA, she actually is, that's one of her specialties. Um, and so throughout the entire county, folks were just being bombarded with you know, requests for CEQA. Um, and she's more of a specialist to understand how to actually draft it so that you're not coming back every year with a new request where this is going to be a one-time request that extends over an extended period of time. So um, that being said, we do have such a matter of expertise within the NWPA that can assist us, but I don't know what the CEQA implications are for that particular location. So that would be something she could also weigh in on. I guys should wait until the migration thing. Yeah. yeah. And then start talking about it. Yeah. That could be another year or so. Um, within the next year, I think they wanted to get that right. That'd be great. I would certainly not like to see it go another year. That's a long time, but um, but to assemble all that information and then ensure that they got all the, the data they need, it could very well take a lot more a lot more crunching. Oh, they, they've been working on it since day one too. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, just want to remind everyone, the chipper program still is uh, in effect all the way through until the month of August. So go to reserve.chipperday.com slash Marin and you can see what dates chipper services will be available in a particular neighborhood that's coming out here this summer. So certainly encourage everyone to take advantage of that. And the direct assistance opportunity, there's still funding available for direct assistance for those who might have large scale projects or um, even fiscal challenges or just need some support and help trying to get some of this vegetation done maybe in phases or even finishing up some of the other stuff that they have not been able to get to up to this point. And Simon Wright is the point of contact still. Uh, we hired three more individuals, I'll speak to that later on in the report. Um, Plant Burns, I thought that was an interesting, um, I received requests going back home maybe last October, November, and we had even meetings with California State Parks officials and the Marin County Fire Department about doing um, open power burns uh, throughout lands that involved San Rafael and the State Parks in Marin County. But they were trying to rush this through, and I said, whoa, this is, this is new to me. I think we need to make sure we understand what we're doing here, when, how, what our redundancy is, our backup plans, and the event something goes awry. We have to advise the community. We certainly have to advise uh, the board directors and um, the various leaders from councils and other areas that could be impacted by this and have a uh, public outcry on this because there's been no communication about it. So we had to kind of back up and slow things down a little bit. Um, county was ready to roll, so was California State Parks, but we weren't quite ready to roll out. But over time, there's been more messaging, there's been more information about um, how the tactical action plan or incident action plan will be developed, what resources will be staged to ensure that if, for whatever reason, the wind picked up suddenly and this power started dropping some debris somewhere else, how would that be handled without creating any risk to the community? And so they identified uh, April 26th as being an ideal day to actually start burning those piles. Well, the weather shifted and kind of created a situation where they um, determined that wasn't probably going to be the optimal day. They're going to push it back. I don't have the new date yet. But I believe they actually may have started some of the burns, even though it wasn't communicated to me directly. So I got to follow up on individuals about that. I guess last week. Maybe two weeks ago, you're doing City Hollow. No, no, no. And I'll talk, like, I'm sure Melody had a position too, but um, Luke's Valley, the teachers closed all the windows and stuff and turned on yeah. all their belt doors again because it literally smelled so they burned. So this is almost like the, um, what was it, burn exercise two summers ago? Yeah, this is probably the one shift. Yeah, this way. Yeah. 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 And, and this is the very reason why they're trying to identify the right day. Those who are making the decision to burn or not burn that day need to understand you know, what the potential impacts are, especially when you're doing this during school year, not during the summer. But even during the summer, you have summer camps, so you have to be mindful even still. Um, <coughs> excuse me, weekends tend to be a better choice in some instances, but um, I'm assuming the decision in that case was made by either California State Parks folks or the Marine County Fire Department personnel, because our personnel are not taking the lead in San Francisco or Ringwood. We're just really participating in supplementing and providing resources and expertise. <coughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I think we're counting in the hills, right? Someone's going to Excuse me. Yeah. Um, county had responsibility up until, actually, until June, I think. Their responsibility is for Ross Valley. They're looking to potentially merge with, um, or at least have responsibility for Ross Valley and Kidfield assumed by Central Marine Fire Department. Okay. So that's that's underway right now. Uh, I think they've been in a conversation about it. I don't know if they've come to final agreement, though, because the county is stepping away from that. Chief Weber's had, thank you, a lot of our responsibility. And, uh, the fire dispatch, now operating office of emergency services, all that falling under his shop at Marine County Fire. Uh, and having to dance amongst all those various agencies and, and do what he's done for the past five years, I think he's decided that you know, we probably better start to be out of the business of contracting with those agencies. So that's why Central Marine has stepped up as a, a key player right now. So, more follow on, uh, more burn piles have been able to resume on an ongoing basis. Here's Stop 2023. Is that the second center? It is. Uh, it's the second iteration of um, Fire Safe Marine's effort to get out of the community and provide a lot of wildfire preparedness and um, uh, vegetation management and fuel reduction information. Just wildfire safety in general and preparedness. And so, yeah, it just has the date, you know, hours? Uh, I believe it's 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, okay. And the NWPA will have a booth there, manned by the directors. Nice, nice. So, Are you so going to I will be there in the early part of the afternoon. You won't be there. I just asked him. <laughs> <laughs> we would all have to go for him. Awesome. And anyway, right, moving forward. Yep, so, uh, a live bird demo that day, do food, music, and activities for children. So, it's great. I'm sorry, You know what? Maybe it's a sports party. Maybe it's a sports party. So, we'll see. Um, Station 58 at a school tour take place there, and they opened the Marin Waller School, and they were showing the apparatus and equipment and received um, some of the plastic badges and helmets, or excuse me, uh, adhesive badges and plastic helmets. And, As I was saying, we moved up. Do you have a lot of stickers? I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. And the kids had a great time, from what I understand. And um, I haven't heard of very many other public uh, education tours at this point, but who knows, maybe this summer, there'll be some more opportunities for our folks to engage with the kids and the youth. Um, I mentioned earlier we have some new vegetation management team members that are um, working to get acclimated to how San Rafael Marin does inspections and how we move about um, doing public outreach and um, <coughs> basically just getting acclimated to the reality here in Marin County using Measure C and the requirements of NWPA. And so Michelle Dietrich, she's a new uh, wildfire mitigation specialist who has 17 years experience as a firefighter paramedic. And ironically, a young man named Stephen Campy came to my office yesterday looking for Marinwood patches, old San Rafael patches, and he had a CHP challenge one he wanted to give me. And I was introducing him to Michelle and um, Cedric and Sophia. And Michelle knew him right off. She actually
kind of autistic, but not exactly. And, and so you can tell there's just something a little different about C. But she remembered him right off, and they connected again after all this time. So, so are you looking from left to right or right to left? Uh, left to right. Okay. Michelle will be on the left, Sophia in the middle, middle and uh, Cedric on the far right. Yeah. So um, they're bringing, she brings some, some great experience. Um, and I interviewed really well. Quinn was excited to have her on board, and then the other two individuals mm -hmm. came close behind her. So we've got a new staff that um, are excited to be here and are hitting ground running. So but we're also looking at hiring some more temporary defensible space uh, inspectors. And so that will continue the effort to ensure that we have not just ongoing year-round personnel, but some of our seasonal staff to come out and do additional work that we've started um, heavily with seasonal staff the first couple of years, and then transition some of those positions into long-term, ongoing year-round um, staff. So we're looking to scale back over the course of probably the next couple of years to just a handful of seasonal staff instead of that big robust 12 seasonal staff that we had before. Um, we think what we have right now on a year-round basis is going to be really instrumental in helping us to reduce risk but still maintain connectivity with the communities and the projects that need to be monitored throughout the year, not just on a seasonal temporary basis. And last but not least, um, one fire incident, I understand it was a fully involved, involved vehicle on the Highway 101. Uh, our personnel extinguished the fire, um, removed some of the belongings to make sure that they were somewhat salvageable and then put it back in the vehicle before they left. Um, not sure what started it, had to get a lot of information on it, but as always, sub six minutes total response time. So um, I wish there was another agency to compare that, but that would just have a tremendous, tremendous benefit on outcomes for a lot of people who are having medical emergencies as an example. So but, um, that concludes my report. If there's any other questions, I'm happy to try to answer. Another question. Yes. Um, you mentioned that the, the basically dispatch, have we separated or are we still in the works of separating from the sheriff? Yeah, but still, the sheriff has been uh, gracious enough to allow us to continue to try to develop our own dispatch capability. Um, it's no longer going to be co-located right next to his office or where his dispatchers currently are, but it's going to be another wing of the building. Um, a lot more space to operate from, room for extension. Uh, Centerville and Ringwood were their outliers with this whole negotiation on uh, how this was going to be paid for and, and to what degree. And so um, we just recently submitted a or signed a letter of intent to join the entire group. Um, Chief Weber, the Ring County Fire Chiefs Association, we haven't met in two months, and so we're meeting on next week on Thursday, the 18th. But I expect that Chief Weber will have more of an update for us at that point about you know timelines and, and next steps. But in the interim, they've identified the space. We know that there's got to be major computer aided, um, computer assisted dispatch um, equipment upgrades. Um, the, the Motorola company and the existing system cannot be used for our purposes, so we're going to have to really do um, some diligence there. There's got to be a several month window of training and getting staff ready to actually handle emergency medical dispatch and fire dispatch capabilities. We're hopeful that some of the folks that are working with the Marine County Sheriff's Office have an interest in leaving law and coming over fire. And we're hearing that's possible. We just don't know exact numbers, but. That'll help the transition, but we also still have to plan on training individuals and getting them ready. The projected timeline is roughly about um, February, March, April of next year. I would guess that it's really going to be summer of next year. And the sheriff originally wanted everything done by June 30th of this year, which was unrealistic, and we pushed back and said there's, there's no way. Um, but what he just really wanted to see was progress being made. I think he didn't want something to just start and trail off, and they're still having responsibility three, five years from now. So um, that being said, it's coming. It's it's not imminent, but it'll be. it's on the way. Yes. Any questions? Cool. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It was great work. And, uh... Thank you. Um, just on April 22nd, we had our uh, spring art show. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't say which, how many years we've done, but we did some annual, I mean, easily which, which one it is. But we have many uh, <laughs> uh, art shows, and it was another really great show, probably our best turnout we've had so far. Um, we had uh, over 50 local artists showing the works um, on Saturday, uh, and um, a great turnout, and um, some really lovely uh, paintings and sculptures and mixed media, and it was a really nice event. So I want to uh, once again thank Susan Press for curating um, our, our show, we have our uh, director for, for the shows, and I really appreciate all her work to, to put into that, and um, it was always a lovely event. So um, that was really nice to have that. Uh, it looks like some people have sold some nice art. So. Yeah, we sold, uh, sold some pieces. We, we typically sell, you know, um, one or more pieces each show. We sold uh, a few more than usual this time, which was great. Uh, okay. And um, yeah, it was, uh, so it was really, really, really wonderful work there. And, um, yeah, it was nice. It was a great, great day for us. We actually had an outdoor item in this microphone. There's a, a really cool outdoor, um, I guess you call it sculpture, but it, uh, it was on the, the little grassy berm just outside the reception hall. And yeah. expand. This is this whole huge thing. It was this, this, this neat uh, structure. It was, um, I don't know, I'm not going to be circled the lawn. Yeah, I circled the lawn, and it was, it was a really big, uh, cool thing. So um, that was something we had anything outside of that before, so um, that was fun. Uh, anyway, that was great. Our, our, next, um, our next event will be our first installment of the Music in the Park series, which will be on Friday, June 23rd. Um, I don't have the details yet for the lineup, but I'll definitely announce it as soon as we know um, who else playing. And then um, midway through the series, we'll, we'll be our Summer Brew Fest, and I'll also be announcing details about that um, probably in my next, uh, our next meeting. So stay tuned for that. We're excited for our summer events coming up. Um, the pool's been going great. Uh, and we had a little bit of a mini heat wave there, about, about a week of nice warm weather that brought a lot of new, new people and returning people to the pool, so a lot of memberships and, and punch cards and uh, a lot of pool party rentals. So that was nice to kind of uh, get people thinking about swimming again and then start raining on everybody again. But, uh, but, um, Things are going great down there, and um, we're looking forward to our summer season. We've, we've been uh, really well with our summer programs for the pool in terms of uh, life our training classes, our gardens training camp, and then swim lessons, which are um, pretty much sold out at this point for the summer. So that's, that's really nice. great. We hopefully will be able to add more depending on um, our instructor availability in the pool space. But uh, as right now, we're planning for things are um, popular and, and uh, selling well. So. Um, and just on a random note, we, um, I, got, I got some calls this week about people looking for pools to swim at about different hours and uh, looking at some of the other neighboring pools. Um, we're one of the pools offering uh, recreation swim every day a week and top pool hours and um, open every weekend day. Uh, so um, that was, I was surprised about that. I was surprised about that. More pools that were open in the area, but a lot of places were waiting until Memorial Day. So um, uh, I'm going to be in a pool in the game now, right now, which, is, um, which is odd, but it's nice to be able to stay the pool and then be open. So that's a good thing. Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I think this is my work. We haven't had finalized yet, but we're really excited. Uh, this summer, the pool where we're partnering with Silverman's Ice Cream, and we'll be selling Silverman's, uh, which, which we did for a short time, a long time ago, um, and uh, for a reason that, that you know, we're 
bringing uh, silver protection back, so we're excited to be able to sell. Like players, is it going to rotate? Um, it, I'm uh, really interested. To, to, to be determined, uh, we, we will um, uh, hopefully by maybe not this weekend, but next weekend, we'll have um, we'll have a stream selling possibly sooner. So um, you know, check that out the menu. Should be great. Yeah. So we're really excited about that, and that'll be, that'll be really fun. We're um, be able to Curtis told me for um, being a part with us and, and help us out with that. So uh, that'll be great. Um, one uh, update about summer camps, we uh, got the school schedule recently, we found out that the local school districts are starting um, a week later uh, than originally anticipated for, for um, them, you know, sort of getting done. And so parents are looking to us, what, what are kids going to do for, um, you know, for, for them this summer? So we are looking to potentially add another summer camp that we um, hadn't originally anticipated. Um, we've not announced any details about that, but um, we're going to staff to make sure we have camp staff to be able to accommodate that and uh, see if we can offer an additional is, week of programming. What is the first day of school then? I don't like have all the details on that, but uh, um, uh, I will do have to check back on the calendar. I hope they're not dropping some news on all of you. Yeah, you are. That's okay, she's very patient. I always thought it was the third week, it was the Thursday, 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 Th
uh, anyhow, uh, plan for that if we can't um, get a more uh, robust repair, but we have a couple options for that as well. We're hoping to get something here. Um, we had a really great company uh, that was coming annually to do some patchwork on our flu shell, and fortunately, uh, the gentleman who ran company is retired, and we have no one get back this year. So I'm looking for an alternative, um, someone that does, kind of has the scuba, the scuba gear go down there and do, do patchwork. It's kind of a very specialized, kind of odd uh, industry, and um, full shell uh, patchwork uh, is, is um, not a lot of people do it, and uh, do it like, you know, just like spot, spot treatment. Yeah. Forward, like, so we're working on it, I've got a lot of contacts, and I'm working on that, but um, at worst case scenario, we'll, we'll be down there doing, doing some. Uh, uh, do you have to, like, do we need to spot? At what point? You don't have to train. If we were going to replace the, the full, do a full pull shell, some, someday we will need to, to do a pull shell replacement. Okay. We, we, would, we would drain the, the pool at that point, but um, in the meantime, um, our pull shells are in relatively good condition if we continue to patch some of the areas that you know, are um, being stressed and, and chipping. Uh, if we continue to do that patchwork, we might be able to you know, get some more use out of the pool, but um, uh, if, if things start to, you know, eventually you, you get to the end of the lifespan of the pool shell. I'm sure that's we, not our request to start. It is. We've actually gone, gone beyond the expected life expectancy. Our pool's been in relatively good shape for how old it is, um, but you know, we're definitely going to have some conversation of okay. looking ahead to what that's going to look like. So. Yeah. Comment on the uh, to be determined, I'll let you know once they're in. Like, yeah, like uh, I will just say it's kind of ironic that I noticed that in our pool this week, and then we swam at Redmond High School, which is a fairly new pool when you consider pools, um, and they had far more, I call them potholes, extremely large, all over that pool. Oh, yeah, like the same kind of thing. So, I, I, I was actually feeling poorly for them because I thought the yeah, school isn't that old. And yeah, a lot of that's, that's one of those things. Uh, I mean, it, from what I understand, a lot of that um, can come with uh, the original work that was done, and you know, what were the conditions, what um, and how, how well work was done, and, and just the conditions at the time. There's a lot of things that can go into the lifespan of a pool shell, but also the water balance uh, plays a big role in um, how keeping your, your pool shell intact. And we've been able to maintain a pretty, a pretty good um, water balance, which is you know, uh, thankfully partly due to, to, to good pool maintenance, partly due to the, the water that we got coming in and, and, and all that. And so and we've been really amazing employees coming in and, um, and a good legacy of, of pool maintenance from from. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so we've been really lucky, and our, our pool has had a lot more longevity than, than what was expected. Uh, but you know, we're at the top of the Okay, did you? I did. I just want to say thank you because uh, it, it, to JP's credit, I believe he stayed overtime or beyond his regular working day yesterday to make sure that we could put in uh, an extra lane line that I broke and I think he went to Home Depot and you know, kind of went back something for this one team. I appreciate that. No, I will let him know if you were saying so. Okay, any questions? Nope, but thank you for helping Eric. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. All right. Any questions? Awesome. Okay. Um, we are moving on to page board member items and trust request for future agenda items. So I'm going to ask a question before I request something. Yes, sir. In what Stephen said earlier is about seniors, do we have anything in place to recognize or engage our seniors besides just classes? Just a general question. No. No, I, mean, I don't look at I mean, a classic program events, uh, but you know, senior outreach would fall outside the scope. But you know, in terms of checking in, isn't I know, you know, I know. It isn't something that but like, I don't, I don't, I don't do. trip. That's why I'm just I'm asking questions before I would add it to it. I'm just I don't disagree with what he's saying with some of our seniors, since I know a few mm -hmm. of which ones he's talking about. That's true. That I would say we could organize wheelchair races. <laughs> If I had to back that up, our fire department certainly knows who some of our most vulnerable oh, population yeah, members are. Uh, yes. And they do check in from time to time, especially when the conditions warrant it, uh, you know, going through a heat wave or power, you know, a drain power outage or something. They know, they know the people are. Okay. No, yeah, they're, they're there. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe. Yeah, and also, while I, I don't want to know, I do appreciate the this, but I also feel like I am not such a personal friend, but I think that we've shown up reaching out to our members. That's crossing the line that I don't feel comfortable doing. So, um, while I do appreciate all I've seen, so if I know them personally, then, yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any? I guess I do. Do we know? Since you've talked about fire going through and looking at all their supplies, are we moving anywhere forward to making sure that the sleeping arrangements are more appropriate? I mean, you literally 30 minutes ago approved the budget board. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I do we know, know yes, what we'll 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 That's what I mean. No, okay. I, 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 like, I know it's in there, but I just wondering. Right. Right. So we'll right. we'll I didn't know if that was like timeline yet, no. so that's why nope. I was asking. Nope. Okay. Yeah, so besides, I think we also want to email updates and stuff like that. All right. Awesome. I am all the way to the Hi, hi. All right. Yeah, whatever. Thank you. Thank you.